You know what kids, there are times when maybe, just maybe, you should not attempt to port a highly sophisticated arcade game or a computer game to a home video game system that just might not be capable of producing a quality iteration of said game, as the end result might be less than desirable. An example that comes to mind is Doom for the Super Nintendo. It's one thing to say that they tried, they made a admirable attempt to bring Doom to the console, it's an entirely other thing to actually have to play it. Doom, however, isn't entirely unplayable, just somewhat or mostly unplayable, but it is certainly more playable than, and infinitely more tolerable than today's subject matter, Race Driven for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Race Driven is a sort of pseudo sequel slash update to Atari Games 1989 driving game, Hard Driving, a highly sophisticated driving game that most people probably know due mostly to the following clip. This game will pwn you! There's a car that gets pwned! 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 And certainly, if you weren't good enough to master hard drive and sophisticated and complex controls to win races or even complete a single lap, you'd at least get some mild enjoyment crashing into things and yelling out PWNED! like a raving lunatic. Race Drive-In added two more tracks to the package and gave you a choice of four cars to play with, along with some other minor tweaks and enhancements that would improve on the overall gameplay. Whatever those improvements entail is completely irrelevant because this SNES version of Race Drive-In plays like absolute garbage. It's already a bad sign when the playfield only takes up a quarter of the screen and runs at about three frames per hour, and I'm fairly certain I'm being generous on that count. And the piss poor frame rate is what foobars the playability here. Besides the super sensitive controls where one hard press on the d-pad is enough to careen you off road and into 360 spins, even the arcade versions control setup as difficult as they were to fully grasp for some were a little more manageable than this and didn't require slight taps to perform safe turns. But even if the controls were impeccably manageable, it's the horrid frame rate that destroys what little playability there is in race driving. Now I've played hard driving in emulated form when it was on the Midway Arcade Treasures disc, and even discovered that race driving was on the third volume of said series of compilations. And well, full disclosure, I'm not good at any of those games, I kinda suck actually. But even so, even with the somewhat stiff driving controls and the skiddy nature of your imaginary vehicle, it felt like that each playthrough I was making some progress and was inking to play a little more just to see how much farther I can get. I never came close to qualifying for a race against the Phantom Photon and found myself crashing more often than not, but it was still a satisfying experience nonetheless, and if you have any interest in playing those titles, the Midway Arcade Treasures compilations are your best bet, short of finding the actual arcade machines of course. Race driving on the Super Nintendo played and controlled so miserably that it made me wish I was playing Enduro on Atari 2600, an infinitely superior driving game despite its quaint mechanics and antiquated hardware. And you know what, here's the funny thing about this shit bro, if the frame rate was a little better, a little smoother maybe, this game wouldn't have looked too bad. Reduced visibility aside, the polygonal work here is actually okay-ish enough that looking at still shots of this thing, you'd probably think, hey that doesn't look too bad for an SNES game from 1992, especially one that didn't have the benefit of any special chips. This thing came out in 1992, Star Fox, which was powered by Super FX, came out in 1993. So from that context, sure everything had a blocky, solid, overall uninteresting appearance to it, but it's easier to think of it as a lower resolution version of the arcade original, again if you're looking at still shots. Once you see this all in action and in glorious 5 frames a month, all goodwill is forgotten in an instant. Even the crashes left me unfulfilled and depressed. Which usually is not the case because the crashes were the best part of the game, to be honest with you. <laughs> but here not really. They suck. How do you fuck up the crashes in race How do you cr how do you fuck up BOUND <laughs> You know what, I'm not even angry. Uh, I'm just depressed. Really, really um, 
Okay, might as well get this over with. Uh, sound quality is negligible. There's some annoying engine sounds that play in the background, along with some horrible screeching when you turn and spin like a crazy person. There's a couple musical cues that, that really don't matter. I like I don't care. Let's be blunt here. Race driving on Super Nintendo sucks. There's not much else to add to the matter that will emphasize this point any further. The controls are crap, the frame rate's garbage, the absurd entertainment value is practically non-existent, and it doesn't even have the custom track creator that was a feature on the Genesis version, which from what I've heard isn't any huge leaps better. Overall, if you really have an urge to revisit those memories of playing hard driving or race driving, I direct you to the Midway Arcade Treasures discs. Hard driving's on Volume 1, race driving's on Volume 3, and if you could find the original arcade machine standing around somewhere in some establishment, hey, that's probably the best way to go for it. But as far as race driving on the Super Nintendo goes, just, just, just don't. No. Just, just don't. <sighs> yeah, that, that was kind of depressing, and uh, yeah. What, what What's next on the docket? Oh, fuck me.